What's up everyone? We actually have a pretty good one for you today. So I'm going to show off this Sony Walkman here. I've added Bluetooth functionality. This old guy from the 80s has Bluetooth. What? Yeah. Um, wasn't too hard, but I'm going to show off how I did it, why I did it, and of course how you could probably do it better um, with, uh, you know, just a little bit more brain power than I have. Um, this uh, quick disclaimer. Um, this isn't a step-by-step -step instructional video. Um, this isn't, I'm, not, I'm in no means an expert with anything, especially electronics and computers and stuff like that. So, um, you know, this is just how I did it. And um, hopefully people get enjoyment out of it and maybe want to try it themselves. So uh, let's get it going. Okay, so here it is in all its glory. This is the WMF-17. This guy was... Uh, New in 1986, so it was a long time ago. Uh, I was just a little baby then. Um, this sold for about $65, so, I mean, that wasn't cheap back then, but at the same time, there was a lot more expensive Walkman, so this was probably like a middle of the road. It is fully featured, though. I mean, it's got AM, FM radio. You can record on it. There's even uh, the ability to, you know, to control the speed, fast and slow. Um, all in all, it's a pretty solid little guy here. Uh, I bought this for, I think, $4 at a uh, thrift store. You know, um, pretty much in great shape. Really not used that much. The only physical modifications I did for this project was obviously soldered into the board and stuff, but that can be removed. The only thing I did permanent-wise was just this little hole right here. Pretty much uh, insignificant. And if you look closely, you can see there's a small button in there, a little tack switch. That's to pair the this with it, whatever your device is. Um, if you hold the button down, it pretty much puts it in a pairing mode, and then you go ahead and you put your whatever your speaker your headphones into pairing mode and theoretically they should pair uh, I haven't had too many issues with it I just use like a little a little screwdriver and stick it in there use a pen or whatever um, and it works great um, so I'm gonna show you show it off here um, we have Gail Snyder's walk time <laughs> this is like a workout tape people used to actually listen to cassettes while they walked and stuff and worked out um, as opposed to like watching you know videos online or whatever or, like uh, workout DVDs and stuff. This was this is how they did it. So it's pretty fun. And I don't think I'm gonna get copy copyright strike for this. Maybe we'll see. I guess we'll find out. The three people that watch my videos might, um, you know, strike me down. To test it out, I have this uh, iHome portable Bluetooth speaker. Really nothing crazy about it. It's not the best sounding quality, and there's a lot of noise. So the problem that I noticed with this right off the bat is there's a lot of noise, a lot of background noise. So it's probably just the way it's going to be basically this speaker always had a little bit of noise to it even with a good quality source and then of course being a tape it's going to send out a lot of noise too so keep that in mind and there might be ways to isolate it and make it better but for this instance uh, i don't really care i'm going to go ahead and i have just two double a batteries in here that's all it runs off of i don't know how much it shortens the battery life adding the bluetooth module i listened to like two full cassettes and it seemed to do okay it was probably you know fine so i'd say like you know, daily use, if you did want to use this, probably wouldn't be too bad. You might have to change out batteries every few days. It wasn't paired, so I'll kind of go over the pairing process. Um, basically, what you can do is you take this, and you take a little screwdriver here or something sharp, stick it in there, press it down for, I do like five seconds, and that puts it in pairing mode, and then you just put your device into pairing mode. For this instance, you just kind of hold this down, and then right away, it pairs up. You can hear the noise. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. And then go ahead and hit play. And then you can do vaporwave mode. Pretty awesome. Fast mode. Actually, like that better. And there's normal. Um, the I don't think the radio really works because I think and the antenna. Your headphones usually function as the antenna, so there's really no antenna to to get radio signal. Let me see if I can find, what am I on? FM. Let 
yeah, there's really, really nothing. You can plug something in and make an antenna, but yeah, it doesn't really work. But you do have tapes, though, so that's what this is all about. So there it is. I'll go ahead and take it apart and kind of show you uh, what I did. All right, let's break it down here. Yeah? So while I'm breaking it down, let's go over, let's talk about why I did this. You're probably thinking, you're probably asking, why did you do this? Well, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. So this was, let's go back to the summer of 2019, a long time ago, if you're watching this video in the future. Okay, there we go. I was drinking my morning cup of coffee, reading the news, surfing the World Wide Web, like I usually do. And I came across this story in my news feed about this new portable cassette player on Kickstarter with Bluetooth capabilities, and I was intrigued. I love cassettes. I grew up um, listening to cassettes. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, so I listened to cassettes, like, unironically and on purpose. So it was, you know, it was pretty cool to see this. I still buy cassettes, both new and used, on artists. I have many players, uh, both, you know, portable um, for the home and then in my car as well. I, I listen to cassettes almost daily in my car. My car has a cassette player. So um, I was excited to see this. So I checked it out, and, I, and, I, and at first I really liked it. You know, it had a really cool aesthetic to it, you know, with the uh, old school throwback to the original, not the original, but the older uh, Sony Walkman and, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy color scheme on there. Um, and then you have the pink one that kind of has that vaporwave vibe to it. Um, and the same with that video. The video, the marketing video they did for it with the girls wandering around in the streets um, looking at stuff and just being weird. Um, that's cool. I like that because that to me is like um, kind of vaporwave, synthwave inspired. okay i was definitely uh considering it and then i looked at the price 75 dollars oof a little bit uh steep for me that kind of um you know that kind of that kind of put me off it a little bit so i forgot about it and then i checked out a i'm gonna put a link in the description of this guy um v west life he's a great youtuber he did a really good video really slamming the it's okay and he basically said it was used kind of not that great. It's mono output, no AM, FM radio, and, you know, it's just, all in all, it's just not that great. Oh, there we go. You know, after watching V Westlight's video, though, I thought to myself, well, I can probably do that myself, right? Just, you know, basically take an existing Walkman and put a Bluetooth module in it and see if I can make it work. And that's what I did. So this is what it is here. Um... A lot, believe it or not, some of these wires aren't for me. This is how it came from the factory. Pretty cool. So um, let me kind of go over and, and I'll show you the um, things you'll need um, to do this before we get too much into it. This is the Bluetooth module I ordered from AliExpress. I ordered like five of them. They were pretty cheap. It just took a while to get here. but um, So <clears throat> this is a Bluetooth transmitter not a Bluetooth receiver. Bluetooth receivers are very common. You can get them basically anywhere. Uh, you use them to hook up to an older stereo that doesn't have Bluetooth or your car stereo, for instance, without a Bluetooth capabilities, um, like an aux port or something like that. Um, this is a transmitter, which is the opposite of that. These are a little bit harder to come by, so more likely you're gonna have to order these online. If you get them on eBay or Amazon, they're a little bit more expensive um, for considering what they are. So I suggest uh, AliExpress for these guys. I've ordered five and it was like, it was like five bucks, basically. I mean, they're really cheap. Um, comes with a uh, an aux cord and instructions, and that's tight. There we go. 
it basically is like a little USB thumb drive, but uh, it has this button here, and then there's where you plug in your aux cord, uh, and then there's where you plug in for power. Um, it runs on 5 volts, basically, 5 volts power, and that's about it for that. So you'll take it apart and you'll strip it down. You'll take, you'll get rid of the, you'll get rid of the USB port and the aux, the headphone jack in here. Um, you'll get rid of that stuff and then it'll be a pretty flat board. And that's actually this board right here. Um, as you can see, it's hot glued into place. I'm not going to fiddle with it too much, but the USB port's gone as well as the headphone jack. I lost the footage of me actually soldering it all together and then underneath there is a piece of electrical tape just so it doesn't short out but when you get rid of all those components it's a very thin board you can see I mean it's like super small and then the next thing is I ordered a few of these as well these are a little bit more expensive I think these are like a couple bucks each but I ordered a few of them this is a little power booster so the Walkman outputs 3.3 volts roughly with the two AA batteries and it will power the US the it'll power the Bluetooth transmitter but not enough to actually work it'll the, the LED will light up and stuff and you'll think oh maybe it's gonna work off this this amount of voltage no you need one of these little boosters now depending on which Walkman you use there might be a source for 5 volt power somewhere. I didn't look I didn't I looked around and I couldn't find it, so I just got one of these. When you strip it down, it's a little thicker cuz you have these like capacitors and stuff. But um but basically, you know, it's pretty straightforward too. This is the it outputs the USB. So you could theoretically go like, you know, do what? Go like that and then it's outputting, you know, from 3.3 volts it'll output to 5 volts and then you're good to go. So I stripped it down, took the USB port off, and I put it um, it's kinda hard to see but I put it down here with a little bit of tape over it just so it's not shorting anything out. It's a tight fit for sure that'll be probably the hardest thing for you to try to fit into the um, into the Walkman itself you might even have to do some kind of external thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's tough. It was tricky, but we got it. Luckily, this isn't the most uh, compact technology for 86, so I lucked out. Um, so you're probably going to want to find an older one that it ha doesn't utilize space as good as this one. If you get a newer one from the 90s, like late 90s, like with the pinnacle of Walkman technology, you're probably going to be um, having a bad time trying to fit everything in there. You might even have to do some kind of like little external 3D printed little hump on the side of the Walkman or something uh, to get it to work better. You take these two things, basically, I'll put up a diagram right now of uh, how to do it. So basically, you, you have your Walkman, and then I put on there, like, the power, you need to find five or six points on your Walkman's board. You need to find your power and your ground. That'll usually be around, you know, the battery compartment. Um, luckily for me, like, the wires came from the battery compartment here, and they went over to... They went over to this little point here, so it was pretty easy to get grab that from there. After you find your power, you'll run that to your power booster, the in part, which on this board is conveniently labeled right here, where it says in, and you'll run where it says out. Um, you don't need these middle pins here. I think, uh, look up a USB pin out, but I think it's the two outer pins is your ground and your power. Desolder this, uh, this port here, you don't need that and then run your power from the output here to your Bluetooth module and then you'll find your headphone port and you'll match up the headphone jack to the Walkman's headphone jack and you'll basically just run the wires the transmitter's headphone jack uh, to the Walkman's headphone jack the solder points on that and you're basically done here's a different board that I purchased so this one's kind of stripped down um, this is the first one I bought. It was actually um, a little bit more expensive one, and I bought it on eBay. It was probably a little nicer board, I guess, but I ended up frying it, and I got the magic smoke come out of it. So you'll desolder the headphone jack as well as the USB here, um, and then these are the points you'll solder to. from this. So you'll go from this headphone jack here to the Walkman's headphone jack there. And just look up a headphone pin out here, but you'll have your left-right ground and then microphone. I didn't do the microphone because I don't plan on recording myself on the, the cassette player, but theoretically you could if you wanted to add a little bit more to it. 
The hardest part of this whole thing is if you're already comfortable with soldering and stuff, the hardest part is just trying to find out where to put it. Here are some of the, I would say, um, the downsides of the way I did it. The Bluetooth module will always be powered on as long as there's batteries in it. So if you don't use it, your battery will die eventually over time. You could easily add a toggle switch uh, somewhere on the, on the outside to turn it off when not in use. But basically when you're not using it, you have to take the batteries out or it's going to drain. There's that, and obviously I didn't add the microphone. And then the other thing that you can possibly do is get a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, put like a USB port on it, and usually a... Um, a lithium-ion battery has a much larger capacity than two AA batteries. That's if you want to get really tricky with it, but this one is, you know, pretty. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So that's about it. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Obviously, any questions, comments, uh, complaints, post them in the comments, and I will try my best to respond. I'm usually quick to respond to, to comments and stuff, as long as they're constructive and not just stupid. So, but thanks everyone for watching, and um, we'll uh, we'll see you next time.